All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. F here, and welcome to my underground layers. Okay, it's just a video on Adobe Illustrator and layers. But uh, in regards to Adobe Illustrator, when you think about Adobe Illustrator, you think about paths, which we talked about. And then you think about layers, which is super important. So let's go ahead and get an Adobe Illustrator document open by hitting Control N if you get this gray screen. Otherwise, um, you just click New on the menu. I'm going to go ahead and title this document Layers, space bar my initials. You put your initials right here, no worries. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, I got my document layered, and I do not have a toolbar or any of my options here. So you could try hitting the Tab key. OK, Tab key didn't bring it up. So then there's the other option of Window, Workspace, Default. OK, that'll bring everything up. Window, Workspace, Default, that'll get your set up the way you want it. I got my toolbar, I got my colors, and importantly, I have my layers. All right, if this layers uh, option here does not show up, you can go to Window, and then go to Layers. And here's the shortcut for it. And remember, shortcuts save you a lot of time. So it's Function 7. That's F7 at the top of your keyboard. It's just one key, F7. So just to take a look, if I hit F7, it disappears. And then students are like, oh my gosh, where'd it go? So you hit F7 again, and it's back. Guess what's back? Layers are back. All right, enough of me singing. So I have my layers here. I have my digital canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we're going to kind of put together what I call a layer sandwich, figuratively and literally. OK? Um, it's important that we remember the stuff from the prior videos and bring it into this video so that we're not forgetting those cool things you can do in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to start by first labeling my layer. Let's take a look. We've got layer one. And all I need to do is double click on it. So I'm going to double click on layer one. It's highlighted. And I'm going to call it bread one. I'm going to hit OK. Um, when we label our layers, this is a great way to keep organized. And I'm very kind of like a neat freak when it comes to uh, keeping organized. And when you do graphic design, and, um, and one of the keys about um, saving yourself time and not having to scroll through to realize where everything is, is you label your layers so that it's like having like a cabinet and you put your stuff in it. Well, if you don't know where everything is, then it becomes a mess. But if you start labeling it, putting it folders and so forth, then you start to um, keep organized, know where everything is, and get to it right away. All right, so I have my layer here. And now, a lot of times, this will happen where there's you click this lock button, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I can't do anything, Mr. F. My computer's broken. There's a line through my pencil thing, and I don't know what to do. All right, no worries. You just click the unlock button, and now you're able to do stuff. And I'm going to hit P for pen tool. I'm going to draw an organic shape. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to make that first piece of bread. I'm going to click and drag. Click that last anchor point. Otherwise, I get this. So I'm going to hit Control-Z, click that last anchor point, make that bread here. And remember, bread's like an organic shape. Click that last anchor point. Click and drag. Click that last anchor point so it doesn't curve out. And click that last anchor point so I don't want it to curve out. And then click that last anchor point. Otherwise, if I don't click that last anchor point, this happens. So I hit Control-Z. Click that last anchor point, click the last anchor point. And then remember, pen with the circle. you got to enclose the shape. Keep your hand steady. Make sure we're on it. All right, looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, mesh around a little bit. I know I used that joke a little too much, so please uh, forgive me for my poor sense of humor. All right, um, so I got rid of the stroke, and because we're not going to use stroke when we mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and provide myself with a brown color. I just hit this down arrow. Um, to get these colors up. This works with CMYK. And maybe I want to bring it over a little bit. That's nah, a little too red. All right. So I'm getting a little kind of a perfectionist here, landing on the numbers with the CMYK. Control Shift A to deselect. All right. So I have my bottom piece of bread. It's an organic shape. Remember, shapes found in nature. Hold the Control key, select it. Okay. You notice how it has no stroke. 
It's very nice. Control Shift A to deselect. Now I'm going to go to the mesh tool. Does anyone remember what the mesh tool shortcut is? Because we're using shortcuts to help ourselves out. It is U. Good job. You got it right. All right, so I go ahead and hit U, and I'm going to go ahead and now I have to select another fill color to give it a mesh. Now it's important that it's deselected because otherwise it won't know that you're going to have to mesh it with the same color. So I'm going to deselect it. So it's deselected. Give it another color. Let's go with a lighter brown and click and Control Shift A. All right, well, you know we're just kind of you know working basically with abstract abstraction. Um, with abstract shapes and basic colors. We're not going to get into too fine detail because I'm teaching you more focusedly on the layers. So I have my first layer. It's the bread layer, and I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Remember, you can't do anything to it once it's locked. So that's kind of good in a way. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And a good shortcut for making a new layer is Control L. Another way to make a new layer is you see this uh, page kind of like folding over and that will create a new layer. And it's basically like I'm stacking another um, layer over um, my bread, because you can see it's on the top. So now I'm going to go ahead and make some lettuce, because I always like lettuce with my um, sandwiches. Eat vegetables, people. No more monster drinks for you, OK? It's uh, not healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and call this layer lettuce. I'm going to hit OK or Enter. There we go. And now I have my layer. It's above my bread layer. I'm going to make an organic shape. Let's go ahead and now I'm not going to click it because I like these curves that it makes. I'm not going to click that last anchor point. And um, oh, there we go. Pen with a circle. And let's just zoom in to make sure we've connected that organic shape. All right. Let me entertain you or let us entertain you. Haha, <laughs> I know. Poor humor. It's early in the morning. I'm making this. Enjoy. All right. So I have my lettuce. And uh, maybe I could give it another mesh tool, because uh, we're working with the mesh tool. Hit U. Got my mesh tool. It's deselected. That's good. Let's go with a lighter green. All right. Control Shift A. So I've got the mesh. I'm going to lock this layer so we can't mess around with it. That way it's permanently there for now, and we can move it around later. I'm going to hit Control L for a new layer. Or remember, you can hit that button. And I'm just going to double click this and call this a tomato. Some people say tomato. I say tomato. All right. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and use my shape tool. Remember, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, tear it up with the shape tool cookie cutters. Now I'm going to make a perfect circle just because um, I can. And I want to make sure that you're using all your shapes. I have organic shapes. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a geometric shape for my tomato. I'm going to give it a color, like an orange color, uh, maybe a little bit darker on that. And remember, you can hit this color by hitting the down arrow. And you have a bunch of swatches to choose from. But I like to make my own colors. And then if you want to do it right from the middle, you can hold the Shift key and the Alt key. Shift key, remember, makes it perfectly straight. The Alt key makes it from the middle. Okay, so if I release the Alt key, it's, um, if I release the Alt key, it's not in the middle. So I, when I dragged it out, like this conversation we're having, um, it goes from the middle. Okay, so that's the Alt key. If I hold the Shift key, that makes it perfectly straight. If I hit the bottom button on the pen or the space bar, that allows me to move it around. Okay, I'm having a ball or a tomato with my sandwich. Okay, Control Shift A. Now it's a great thing. To uh, that I have my other layers locked, because watch happen, what happens if I don't lock my other layers. I'm working with the tomato, and then all of a sudden, oh, gosh, my lettuce got in the way. No. Ah, oh, man, I'm really not cutting, cutting it. Oh, speaking of that, I probably should make the cheese after this. Um, cutting the cheese. All right, bad joke. Um, it's always worse when I have to explain things, uh, the jokes and stuff. All right, so we want to make sure that um, these things are locked down so we're not moving them around when we're working with the other layers. So now I could just work with the tomato. I can't mess around with the other layers. It's really kind of a nice thing. Um, also, I'm going to make um, another geometric shape. Let's go ahead and go to the polygon tool. I'm going to hit the down arrow to give myself a triangle. Um, you can hold the shift key if you wanted to. And I'm going to make it a lighter um, version of red, so more of a tint. We're going to go, ooh, that's too orange. 
So let's go with a lighter. Let's move this to like 90. And I'm just going to type in 90 here. So, oops. Accidentally typed in a punctuation mark, and that's what happens. All right. And I'm noticing that I have a lighter tint of red. And I want to drag this out, this anchor point out. And I don't want to mess around with these other anchor points. So, because if we go to the selection tool, we can drag it out that way. But I just want to drag this anchor point out just to show you how it's done. So I'm going to go to the direct selection tool. The shortcut is A, good. You're looking at the parentheses. I like what you're doing there. So I'm going to hit A. And I'm just going to go ahead and you see that little box that turns kind of um, white and the white fill there? That lets me know that I have the anchor point. And now look, I'm only selecting this anchor point. So that's a direct selection tool. And I'm just going to drag it up. And then I could just um, highlight or drag this area around this one. And you see how that deselects? That's another way to select the anchor point. And I'm just going to do the same thing there. And then I have my tomato. And then if I want to rotate it, I go to an invisible corner. And I just drag it. See, I, I'm just clicking and dragging. But you got to make sure those two arrows come up in the invisible corner in order to drag it. That's to rotate. OK? So I'm going to shrink it down, hold the Shift key, drag that little corner box, shrink it down a little bit. I know there's a lot going on here. There will be plenty of other tutorials for me to tell you on how to do things. OK? So I have my um, triangle. You can make another triangle if you want. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this out. And then I could go ahead and A for the direct selection tool. And whoops, I missed the anchor point. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect it. And I'm just going to drag it around the anchor point there and drag that out. Bring this one in. And then drag out a little corner there. And then there we go. So I have another one. And I'm going to shrink it down. Hold the Shift key so it's proportional. We want to keep the same proportions. We don't want to distort it. right? So hold the Shift key down. And then I'm going to rotate it. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong part. Make sure you get the corners so I can rotate. You say rotato, I say rotato. You say tomato, I say tomato. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and here's a really cool thing to know in Adobe Illustrator. It's, called, uh, it's a duplicate shortcut. And I'm going to teach you this because um, I'm cool like that. All right, so I want to duplicate this one and drag it over. So I'm going to go ahead and select and drag it. I'm going to hold the Alt key. And you notice how the cursor now has two little cursors. One's fill, one's uh, transparent. When I hold the Alt, drag it and hold the Alt key in the selection tool, it's telling me that it's duplicating. Okay. Now if I hold the Shift key, it's going to do it really nice. So hold the Shift key, right? And it's kind of like right next to it. But make sure you, you uh, don't put mayonnaise on it because it's not good for you. So hold the Shift key and uh, hold the mayonnaise. All right, um, so I'm dragging this out. And I held the Alt key and Shift key. So let's try that again. Drag it out, hold the Shift and Alt key. OK, release the pen and then the Shift and Alt key last, because we want to release our shortcuts last. And then I'm going to hit O. Oh, man, that's right. I got to reflect. That's a good way to remember. And you're like, oh. That's OK. You know, I remember telling a student once, I was like, oh, it's so close. You're so close. It's the reflection tool. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, you're right on the money. And then I like made her cry, and I was really sad. So I was like, oh, no, no, the shortcut's oh, oh. That's why I was just making, you know, kind of like trying to give you the, the answer. All right, so um, we have O for the shortcut, and it's for the reflection tool. And you could see this little um, targeting area. That's where I'm going to reflect around. So I hold the Shift key. And I, I'm in the reflection tool, and I'm dragging it out. And then I reflect it. Very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and reflect this one here by dragging it up. Hold the Alt key, and then the Shift key. And then I'm going to go ahead and release the um, pen, and then the Shift and Alt key. And then the next, I'm going to hit O for the reflection tool. Oh, that's right. Oh. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, drag it down and hold the Shift key. Now it goes off my digital canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Selection Tool. You can go to Selection Tool by, remember, holding the Control key. I know there's a lot of shortcuts here to remember. If you remember two or three you know, for this tutorial, that's awesome. Okay, um, I'm just giving you a bunch for those people who have a good memory 
and um, can remember it from um, this tutorial. Now I'm dragging it down on the square, holding the shift key to make my tomato. Okay, And then I'm just going to go to that corner, select it, invisible corner, and just rotate it. Okay, Very nice. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have my tomato, and I'm just going to go ahead and lock it. And now I want to put some cheese. All right. So I've got to make sure I make a new layer. Control L for the shortcut. Good job. Double click on it. The layer four. Type in cheese. Oops. I can spell. Ay. Okay. And then I have cheese and I hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit M for the rectangle tool. All right, so I'm going to make a geometric shape, even though cheese is an organic shape. But I just want to make sure I'm tightening my mad skills. So I'm using organic and geometric shapes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, draw out a rectangle, and I'm just going to take a make it yellow, and I'm going to try something different just because I want to tighten my skills a little bit. I'm going to duplicate this by holding the Shift key. I'm dragging it, by the way. Shift key and Alt key. And then I release the pen, and then the Shift and the Alt key. And then I'm going to go ahead and just drag that swatch over to the fill. And now I have two colors. Now, that doesn't really look like any cheese I know. Not that when I blend it, it will. But um, it just lets me use the skills that I've learned in my past tutorials. So I'm going to go to the Blend tool. The shortcut for that is good, W, OK? Let's just. Bring the cursor over and watch for the shortcut, W. And I'm just going to click on the yellow and then click on the orange, and it's a nice little blend. Okay, That's my cheese. I know it really doesn't look like any cheese you know, but some of that process stuff, it's, it's starting to look like this. So um, yeah, I'm kind of scared. All right, um, so we have some cheese. We have some tomato lettuce. We're going to need to get to the um, meat of this tutorial. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, I'm going to put some meat in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw it an organic shape, make sure that we um, just have fill, no stroke. And I'm just going to make some turkey, because I like turkey. And when you're doing this tutorial, you know, you can make sandwiches. I had some students make um, uh, like cheeseburgers. Some people like uh, hot, uh, hot dogs. They made a hot dog. Um, they, made, um, they made a pizza. But the thing is, is um, you just have to make sure it's an aerial shot from like up above, and you're looking down and stacking it on. Okay, so um, if you do a side view, it's really not going to work out that well because you don't layer it on top, and that doesn't that kind of defeats the purpose of this this video. So make sure it's an aerial view. Um, just a heads up on that. Um, if you're making a pizza, or you're making a um, cupcake, someone was making, or um, uh, they're making a, a hamburger, um, or like me, a sandwich. All right, so I have my next um, organic shape. Remember, I enclosed it with a pen with a circle, if you can recall. Um, I'll just go to the last anchor point here. Pen with the circle. We got to remember to close those anchor, uh, close the shapes because when lines are enclosed, you have your shape. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this layer, and I'm going to call it turkey because I love turkey sandwiches. All right, and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, gradient because I can, and I'm also you know mastering my skills. So I'm going back to remembering how to go to the gradient. And my gradient tool is G, good. And we're going to go ahead and select the gradient from over. OK, my gradients are not here. So what do you do? Good question. I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to go to gradient. It's Control F9, just for those of you who love shortcuts. Control F9. Um, and then I'm going to click gradient. There we go. I have my gradients. And I can see that it's a pretty uh, unusual color. So I'm going to go ahead and Go with a little turkey color here. Let's just take this swatch and drag it to the white. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit, alter the color a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's go um, and drag this swatch to the dark. We're working with value now. We're adding some depth, kind of, but that's OK. It's just because I'm retaining those skills, those mad skills that I know. All right, and I have a little bit of a gradient. OK, it looks a little oven roasted. That's fine, just the way I like it. And I'm just going to go ahead and lock that layer. Now, you can go ahead and make a new layer. And I'm just going to add some 
uh, mustard. Uh, and I'm going to hit OK. And you could put, you know, uh, mayo on it, but I like to hold the mayo like I do with the shift key. All right, so I'm just going to do mustard just um, to show you that I can add brush to it too. So I'm even putting in line, and this is in another layer. Remember, I hit Control L to make that new layer and called it mustard. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a mustard swatch color. And I'm going to go to the brush library. I love the Chinese brush. Remember, that was in a tutorial before. And I'm just going to go ahead and select that Chinese brush. OK, remember, we have to have a stroke, no fill. I apologize. So a stroke, no fill. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the mail. Control Shift A. Let's go ahead and, ooh, I like kind of making, sometimes I like um, making personality with my food. So there's a smiley face. Maybe, uh, you know, a little bit unusual, but um, it makes me happy when I see happy things. So I hope it does make you happy. Even if, even if you're having a bad day, you know, maybe this will help you out a little bit. Because nothing's wrong with putting a smile on anyone's face, or a sandwich in this case. All right, so I have some uh, my sandwich. I'm going to close it off with a new layer by hitting Control L, and I'm going to call this bread two. Okay, this is going to top it off. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and slash my stroke. Hit X for my fill. Remember to slash your your stroke. You hit the question mark here forward slash, or you can hit this none, and then I hit X to get to my fill. And now I'm going to go ahead and go with the brown um, of the bread. Now, how do you get that brown color for the bread? Because I want to make it kind of look like the same as the one below. So watch this. I'm going to hit the eyeball on those layers, you see? And they're like disappearing. So look at the cheese. I hit the eyeball, and it's gone. But it's not gone. It's there. No, it's gone. It's there. Look, it's kind of unusual. But it's, um, it's basically to help you see what's below. So you can see. There's my um, bread on the last layer. I'm going to go ahead and I want to select this uh, color on my bread. But then you're like, oh, no, it won't work. Nothing will work because you have to unlock it. And then I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool, eye for eyedropper. And I'm just going to click on that, that brown there so I get that brown color on the bread. And I'm just going to go ahead and go back and lock it. And I'm going to bring back my other layers. And I'm just going to go to the pen tool now. So I have my fill of the brown that I wanted. I'm just going to go ahead and draw out another organic shape. Click that last anchor point to get that straight edge. Click that last anchor point and click that last anchor point. Ah, uh, that doesn't look right, that last part of the bread. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. That's kind of goofy. All right, Control Shift A, and I have my bread, and I'm going to go to the mesh tool. You got it. That's U for mesh. Good. And then I'm going to go ahead and select a lighter um, fill. Remember, I deselected the bread, and then I gave myself a different color fill, and then I clicked on it to give it the mesh, and we have our sandwich. Great job. Remember, you can hit the eyeballs to get rid of certain layers. Okay. Now this is really important for your understanding of layers. So I put everything, you know, in a full or in a layer so that we know um, how it's labeled. So if we were to go into a cabinet, we know um, where the papers are that we need to get. Um, that was that analogy before. But um, we have our layers and it's organized. Now what's going to happen is is we're going to want to mess around with the layers. Okay. So it's important that we. Um, just get a feel for moving things around, and you kind of know what's going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag the bread up to the layer above the tomato. You don't really see anything because everything's happening below the, br the bread two layer. So I'm going to hit the eyeball on that. Let's bring the cheese to the top of the mustard. Um, you notice how it covers the mustard now because that layer cheese is above the mustard. So it's important that the order of the layers, um, that you recognize that and that you're taking into consideration when you're making these layers or when you're organizing them that you put them in the cor correct order. Like watch, if I have the bread here and I put the mustard on top of the bread by dragging it all the way to the top, you got it. Now um, when you're dragging 
to the top, you have to be careful because you see these arrows, these little arrows, you have to make sure that those arrows appear. Otherwise, if you just lie like, oh yeah, I'm throwing it into this lock layer, it doesn't really do it. See, it goes back to normal. So make sure when you're dragging up and you're bringing it above, you know, let's say above the mustard layer, you get this little tiny arrow in the corner there and you see, bam, the turkey's on top, okay? Um, if you want to drag things below, you go to the mustard, you make sure that you have the arrows. Um, and if you don't have the arrows, watch what happens. I'm going to bring the lettuce, there's no arrows, and bam, the lettuce stays there. Okay, so make sure you, when you bring the lettuce down, you get the little arrows, and you see those double arrows? That'll let me know that I'm able to drop it in. Okay, other things to note when, um, what I notice when students are making uh, errors is that they forget to lock their layers. And when you forget to lock your layers, and you're like, just like, drag, 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 I drag around, drag, ooh, and then they're like, oh yeah, and I'm just gonna drag this into here, and oh, I forgot that there has to be little arrows, so I see a big arrow, and boom! Oh my gosh, we have a big mesh, oh man, and it's a bread and a bread, and it's like, oh, it's the same layer, and it's a big mess, and don't worry, there's a way to fix that. You just hit Control Z to undo, and then you have that bread back here in that layer, you lock it, and then you hit Control Z to undo that again. Let's get that bread back. And then we have our bread back. So Control Z till that bread comes back, okay? Um, and then we just lock our layers down. So make sure that when you're, um, you're not throwing another layer into another layer here, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna be combining your layers and you're gonna, your papers are gonna become a mess and your cheese is gonna have lettuce on it. And you're gonna be like, it's a cheese lettuce and you're like, whoa, what happened? I, I, I wanna move things around and then they become a problem. So if you want, remember, to get out of that, you hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, till that lettuce goes back. And then the lettuce goes back there. And then we have the mustard on that layer and the bread here and the cheese on the other layer. So it's all good and we've got it going on, all right? So I'm gonna just gonna, now that I've moved the layers around, I'm gonna go ahead and put it to its original positions. Bread two at the top, um, I believe that the tomato was above the lettuce, and then the cheese was above the tomato, and the mustard was um, above the turkey. And I remember, I'm getting those little arrows, um, and we've got it in the position. We've got our sandwich. I hit the eyeball. We just make sure that things are where they need to be, and we're golden, or should I say toasty. It is kind of hot in here, but um, anyway, um, in regards to the uh, the uh, sandwich and layers. If you want to make a hamburger, that's great. Um, a cupcake, that's awesome. Uh, hamburger, that's cool. Um, or uh, pizza, go for it. Um, just remember aerial view where you can stack it upon uh, layers so that you're getting used to the layer format. Um, all right, so I hope you like this video and um, now I want a sandwich. Awesome, my stomach is growling.